next speaker is very well known renowned personality dr fayaz sheikh dr fayaz uh, talked about uh, uh, headache update and now he's going to talk about uh, uh, case studies and head uh, secondary headaches thank you mr chairman so those of you who uh, were in glasgow um, three months ago probably would have seen these cases because I, I did present it in one of the case sessions but there are some new cases as well and I know that we are running late so I'll try and do it uh, quicker. The best way to do the cases is to interact with the audience but I think the audience is quite quite big and I wouldn't be able to uh, put it on to the audience otherwise it would take a long time to finish the presentation. So what I thought I would do is show you these cases. They are all real cases. They are all cases from my clinic. And I'll just emphasize what we learned from these cases over the years. There are about 19 cases. Um, once you get fed up or I see people sleeping or the chairman dozing, then let me know and I'll finish it. Um, if possible, we could, we could finish all of them. Okay, so, so this is uh, a chap that goes to the dentist because he's got some pain and um, after the second tooth removed, his pain got settled and he was happy and the dentist was happy as well. Are you happy? Okay. Right. Smile, you tell me. Number one, it took a long. First of all, we don't have a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's too, too simplified, too much simplified of that. Okay. Okay, so Dr. Khatri makes comments that it's too oversimplified. Uh, we don't know the diagnosis and then it could be anything. But obviously, um, I think he decided to go to the dentist himself. So it was not invited by the dentist. Um, okay, so what happens in two years time? Okay, so two years later, He's got another tooth removed now. Uh, the dentist was happy, the patient was happy. Are you happy? Why not? They have the right to be happy. Wonderful. Just, could anybody suggest what else was going on? Could anybody suggest an alternative explanation? Though it hasn't given the details of the history, but cholesterol headache is another possibility. Yeah, okay. So, uh, good luck to the patient and also good luck to the dentist. Three years later, fortunately the dentist was on leave. The GP uh, obviously is a different system of healthcare in the UK. Given antibiotics and if it didn't settle, he was referred to the headache clinic. Um, I, I don't know what would have happened if the dentist would have come back by that time. Uh, yeah. So, you can, you can see what was it. And it was a very typical pattern. The problem Aziz was mentioning about why not you see a lot of people with cluster headache. The problem is 90% are episodic cluster headache. And by the time they have seen a few doctors, the cluster is finished. They don't need to see, and particularly in such an expensive society, so inflated society. I'm really surprised that in the last 20 years, Pakistan is so expensive. They don't want to see the doctor if they get better. So why would they go and see the doctor? Okay, case two. So the highlight is 65, uh, smoker. Previous migraines, some weight loss. Okay, so uh, what is the diagnosis? Giant cell arthritis. That's what the doctor thought. Yeah, five pound is not that bad. You stop eating for a couple of days, you lose about three pounds. I know, I know. But you see, the plasma viscosity is not that high. 
the CRP is not that high, but I, I agree. So the general practitioner did the right thing. He put the patient on steroid, uh, very good response, the pain went away, but as soon as the prednisolone or steroid started to go down, the pain came back. And that was a problem. Every time the steroids reduced, the pain came back and the GP put the steroid up again. Um, by the end of one year, he would have been persistently on 30 milligrams of prednisolone, so, you know, look Cushingoid. And the patient was referred for temporal artery biopsy. It was a bit too late. It should have been done about a year ago. So, the history was different. It was an excruciating pain, which shouldn't be excruciating if it was, a, if it was giant cell arthritis. Relieved only by painkillers, but that is what patient thought. And that is what happens in cluster headache. Patient thinks that he takes a painkiller and the pain goes away. But you know that cluster headache goes away within an hour anyway. So it's what patient tells you, and he says, Dr. Saab, whenever I take a painkiller, it goes away within an hour. But it comes back a few hours later when the painkiller effect goes away, I take another painkiller and the pain goes away. And the doctor listens to the patient and make a judgment that this is probably an analgesic misuse or something else. But what does he do when he has the bad headache? He's restless, he can't sleep, he had a dramatic response to steroid, and all of this can happen with cluster headache. So the take home message is, the cluster headache people can present with a history that they think you have got pain relieved by um, energy six. So uh, Khatri Saab, oh that's brilliant, excellent. Now for many, many years, it was thought that this was a school guy, you know, wanted to run away from school until the penny dropped. He finished school and it was still happening. The ENT people just couldn't make any sense of it. And it was a very typical annual cluster headache. So this is how the diagnosis can get missed. And, and uh, that's why you might see uh, a low incidence of cluster in a society where people um, uh, don't really want to go and see a doctor unless it's absolutely necessary. It's the history taking which is very important. And look, typical autonomic features as you mentioned, but most importantly, what does people do when they have cluster headache? They are restless. They can't sit still. They can't go and lie down. People with migraine would go and lie down in a dark and a quiet room. They don't want to be disturbed. They don't like these big bright fluorescent lights. But people with cluster headache, they just don't know what to do. They just go out, they'll go out and smoke, they'll go and have a cup of coffee, they bang their head on the wall. That's a real case from my own hospital and my own neurosurgeon was responsible for that. It was a trigeminal neuralgia diagnosed but see where the pain was. Where is the typical pain for trigeminal neuralgia? Typically, it should be V2, V3. If you have trigeminal neuralgia in V1, think about it because there are extremely rare to have trigeminal neuralgia in V1. If it is a V1 pain that sounds like trigeminal neuralgia, it is likely to be something fairly rare, like sunct, suna kind of pain. You heard about sunct and suna? Yeah, okay. So it was a case of sunct and suna. So the take home message is, Trigeminal neuralgia, short, sharp, stabbing pains like trigeminal neuralgia in V1, it is not trigeminal neuralgia, it is sunt or suna. It is like trigeminal neuralgia, but it does not respond to tegritol, it does not respond to oxcarbazepine or gabapentin or pregabalin. It would respond to lamotrigine. Not all, but majority would respond to lamotrigine.
Okay, so slight change in the in the um, yeah. Well, I just gave him a block so that he gets better a bit quickly, and then put him on lamotrigine. So a little bit of a change in the pace. This is slightly different case. So um, you you can see it's a it's a typical textbook picture of cluster headache. That's what I thought. Very typical features. Normal examination, normal MRI. I put him on steroids. No benefit. Verapamil, no benefit. Nerve block, no benefit. Methisa guide, no benefit. To pyramid. But he had a good response to oxygen and immigrants. So acute treatment, he responded. But pre prevention, why he didn't? So I just didn't know what to do. I mean, I was confident that it was the right diagnosis. Do you feel this was the right diagnosis, cluster headache? But mind it well, there are cases of intractable chronic cluster headaches that you then go on to give deep brain stimulation, occipital nerve stimulator, and other things. So you don't. Yeah, but you don't think about changing the diagnosis if you are confident. Okay, so this was my case. I felt confident that it was the right case. I treated him as a cluster headache until when he came for a review. And what was in the review? So, I call it pattern recognition. You know, when you are medical students, you read textbooks, you then see cases, you analyze it, and you try to use your analytic skills but when you become a consultant and when you become a super specialized consultant, you tend to recognize patterns. And sometimes it is too dangerous to be recognizing patterns. And I should have done a full blood count. I should have done just the way the normal doctor works. But I was too pattern recognized. And if I wish I would have done these, we wrote this case report in the BMJ uh, we admitted that we missed the diagnosis for a few months and I didn't diagnose it, it was a hematologist who actually eventually got the, the answer. So whenever he had the venesection, he got better and whenever his hemoglobin went up, his cluster came back again. So it was a cluster-like headache, not actual cluster headache. The only odd thing is that it's a female. And I don't think she was a smoker either. So it was a female, it was a non-smoker and gave a very typical uh, feature of uh, cluster headache. Uh, with her, what happened is when we put her on steroid, she got better. And then as we tapered off the steroid, because we usually give a week of 10 days of steroid, the symptoms came back again. Um, we put her on verapamil and she responded, and then we stopped the verapamil as well. So any idea what is uh, the diagnosis here? Sorry? Uh, no. She can be Tolosa Yeah, she could be Tolosa Hunt. Yeah. Or. Yeah, Kevana sinus thrombosis. Orbital pseudotumor. Yeah. Or orbital myositis. So the, the odd thing was that she had a poor reduction of the left eye and proptose left eye, which would all go into some pathology in the apex or cavernous sinus. So the orbit showed quite reasonable evidence of orbital pseudotumor. So it was a cluster-like headache due to underlying orbital pseudotumor. So if you have a case of cluster headache that is not really giving you uh, a flavor of how they should behave, think about some alternatives. So the odd thing about this case was that the patient did have a partial right third nerve palsy. There was a limited up gaze in the right eye with right tosis So it's a partial right third nerve. All other features were very typical of cluster headache. No, no, no. I mean, you get Horner's with the... So you got Horner or third? Well, we thought it is because it's up, up case policy as well.
So we thought it's a partial third with pupil sparing, yeah. But there was a meiosis as well, yeah. So um, that was the limited upgaze. We couldn't find out a reason, so it was cluster-like headache with cl actual cluster headache, but this time we didn't find a cause. Um, the scans were all normal, so we did publish it because it was, it was not, it is not reported often to have ophthalmoplegia. But now I think since then there are two or three more cases reported where there is a transient ophthalmoplegia of different. Um, extent in uh, reported in cluster and you know as cluster headache people can also have aura about 10% people would have aura as well okay so that's all about cluster I think no I've got one more about cluster okay yeah this is this is good so um, have a read and if you've been in my uh, first lecture you probably should get the answer two to three times a day, 20 to 60 minutes. So that's pretty close to cluster. Unilateral with autonomic features, excruciating, being restless, so that's very typical of cluster. Precipitated by alcohol, which is very typical of cluster. And all the MRI and everything was normal. So he was oxygen and sumatriptan, he did well. He was given a course of steroid, had no response. Commenced on verapamil, had no response. Topiramate had no response. Lithium had no response. Uh, sodium valproate had no response. Nerve block, no response. So again, this is sounded very much like a cluster headache with no response to any form of treatment. What do we do next? Give Sorry? Give Amitriptyline. Any other suggestion? Indomethacin. Sorry? Indomethacin. Dramatically two things remain well. He was one of my case that I treated over 18 months. And I was so confident that he had a cluster headache that I treated him with everything possible. And then I sent him for a second opinion to one of my colleagues in Liverpool, Nick Silva. And, and I was so embarrassed when he came back and said, Nick Silva gave me indomethacine and I've got no pain. And I call myself a headache specialist. Isn't it embarrassing? So the message is unilateral headache, even though it is absolutely classical, Get the indomethacine thing out of the way before somebody else have a go at you. Okay, so this was all cluster headaches, indomethacine responsive headaches. So all the trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia, cluster headache is the most common. Paroxysmal hemicrania, which is like an indomethacine responsive headache. Sunt and Suna, V1 distribution. They are excruciating, unlike migraine. People are restless and they're um, Frequency and duration is different to migraine. Worst pain, female describe it worse than childbirth. Highest pain intensity, suicidal, da 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 da. Uh, one. Average time for diagnosis. Yeah, I mean, at the moment I've got a research fellow who's doing her doctorate on why there is a delay in diagnosing cluster headache because on an average, uh, a cluster headache patient would see five specialists and on an average it would take two and a half to three years before they get the diagnosis and we're just thinking why it takes so, so long to get the right diagnosis. Okay, so that is something, not all headaches that respond to indomethacin are paroxysmal hemicrania. Okay, there are some uh, other headaches like hypnic headaches or um, Sometime even the thunderclap, not the thunderclap, which ice pick headaches or primary stabbing headaches, they would also respond to indomethacine. So just to remember that there are some indomethacine responsive headaches. Okay, so that changes the pattern of uh, uh, presentation from trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia to some other interesting cases that uh, uh, we wanted to. Okay, so um, case nine. Yeah, you could say that, but the only problem is uh, 
he felt restless and desperate, had to get up and found himself pacing the room, which doesn't really that much happen with hypnic. So MRI, MRA was normal. So the second MRI, MRA was also normal. Now it becomes a persistent pain. So went for a second opinion and had amitriptyline uh, given diagnosis of migraine. Then a week later was admitted with the third nerve palsy. But the third MRI was abnormal. Now you could argue that the pathology may have developed between the second and the third. It's very difficult here to say whether the whole pathology was exactly the same as what it was a year, a month, a month ago. So really the, the take home message is that a normal scan does not make you a future proof that you will never have any abnormality. So take every case on its merit as and when it comes and as and how it presents and do not forget to do a neurological examination and a good history every time the patient comes back, particularly if he hasn't responded to uh, the treatment. Okay, case 10. Tell me when to stop. Yeah, I mean, I'll carry on. It would help if you uh, read them quickly. Now this is a very interesting case that uh, I had struggled and when this case presented to us, uh, we had a headache conference in Hull and we had every, everybody from UK including Professor Goldsby and everyone came and even they couldn't suggest what was happening to him. Um, so this is a guy who said headache precipitated by physical activity playing rugby, lifting weight, going to the gym, having sexual intercourse, lasted for a few hours with some backache, stiffness in the neck and he would feel a bit confused and muddled up for a few hours then he would get back to normal until he goes to the gym again or whatever exertion he would do next. Any idea? Primary yeah well that's what everybody said, primary exertional headaches. But why would he get confused, muddled up, for a few hours he will have stiff necks and back backache. And you know he, here within a minute I will give you the answer but we struggled for his management for quite a while. His CT and MRI was normal, his CTA angiogram, MR angiogram was normal. We treated him as migraine, we gave him migraine prophylaxis, nothing happened. In the meantime we had our national headache conference, we presented him to the world known experts and no further suggestions were made. Spinal tap, Spinal tap was done, yes, but at a later stage. And that was, uh, that was suggested by one of the neurosurgeons because when we did a spinal tap, we found xanthochromia. And we couldn't really explain that he's been having these exertional headaches for, for years um, and his angiograms were all normal but the CSF does show xanthochromia. And then somebody suggested that we should really do his MRA and CTA of the whole spine and that gave us the answer that he actually had very pointed osteophytes in his vertebral column and whenever he used to uh, do exercise, it would pinch the dura, puncture it and he'll develop a low CSF pressure headache which would repair within a few hours and he'll be back to normal. So look, uh, I'll show you. So we wrote it up um, in the journal, we got it published, uh, but it took us ages to get a diagnosis and then he had a repair um, by the neurosurgeons and it never happened again. He did give a good history for thunderclap headache. Well, what was odd was the neck pain, visual disturbance. Um, and I think the person who was taking the history um, probably didn't make a lot of attempt to get things out and he wasn't a good historian either. But it was probably uh, not asked whether the headache had a postural component. So please don't forget to ask the postural component. Um, the headache comes on standing um, in 15 minutes and then goes away on lying down. So the patient really had um, low CSF pressure.
So I'm not going to go into that. I think you people all know about it. So let's do two or three more cases. Right, there's, I can give a prize to someone who could give me the diagnosis here. Because I couldn't get the diagnosis. I think it was one of our residents who actually gave us the diagnosis. Recurrent episodes of headache and confusion. Ophthalmologist, sorry? Cadacil? No. So there was a suggestion of Cadacil from Dr. Khatri. Best ships, yeah, good suggestion. There you are, I think you, I owe you a prize now. Yeah, it says Suzak. Do you know what Suzak is? So, basically, it's got a snowball appearance of the corpus callosum um, with white matter lesions. And, and it was the deafness, the retinal vein occlusion, and the headache with confusion. But I think one of the residents came out and said, I think we should do an MRI scan. And that's where the penny dropped. But it's very rare. I mean, I've only seen one case in lifetime. Have you seen quite a few? Yeah. Well, I've only seen one case. Yeah. But that. Maybe, Payaz, you can tell the audience uh, about what this is uh, because if it's. Yeah. Rare. So, so Suzak syndrome is a triad of recurrent retinal artery occlusion, hearing loss due to cochlear artery occlusion and cerebral arterial involvement which causes people to have uh, confusion, being muddled up uh, as a result of the ischemia. And the full triad is not necessary. You can have two of the three um, and, and the MRI would typically show um, the snowball lesions in the corpus callosum which you've seen here uh, in the number A. And um, it's a good case, uh, but you wouldn't come across it again. I think since then I have been searching for it, but I've never found one. So there is a suggestion from here that this could be Cadacil. Any other suggestion? So why do you think it's Cadacil? Well, she got mind, then she got family, she got white water disease, she got all There you are. She, she ticks all the right boxes, and yep, she did have a Cadacil. Um, so what is Cadacil? Well, you have to suspect it. If you get vascular events in a young people or a young person with a family history, and typically it presents at an early age with a temporal pattern or temporal lobe, high signal intensity lesions, 93% um, and 86% in the, in the temporal lobe and external capsule. But these are the cases like Suzak and um, Cadacil, you wouldn't come across too frequently. I think you will just have one case in your, in your practice or you will diagnose and I think you'll live on it for the rest of your life. Okay, just last one or two cases. So, well, where are the residents uh, who could... Uh, is, uh, all the diagnosis is coming from Dr. Khatri, you know. I thoroughly enjoyed your talk. Yeah. Hopefully this would be the last case, uh, last case, inshallah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you see, because we're not going to take questions anyway. So the, the, these cases are very evident. Yeah. What's the diagnosis here? Any suggestion? Yeah. So the clue is in the first line. She was assisting to lift and develop this pain. Yeah. So it is dissection. Okay. Right, I think I'm going to stop here. There are another four or five cases, but I think... Uh, okay, this, the, the, we can enter it in the last one. Okay. This, uh, make it last, please. Okay. Any idea from the residents or juniors or neurology trainees? So 24, concentrate on 24 year old lady, concentrate on change in the pattern of the migraine. 
and the CT scan being normal, the normal CT scan is normal and she then have a fit. CVT, very good. Yeah, she did have a CVT. So right, I'm going to stop here. I, I have got this presentation that I would pass it on. If people wanted it, they can have it. Uh, there are four or five more cases, um, but I think they are all on the on the very similar similar pattern. So thank you very much for your attention.